Hi friends, and welcome to Thoughts for Today and Words for the Week, March 21st, 2020. I trust that you've had the opportunity to enjoy some of the beauty outside in the last few days as things have warmed up and signs of spring are all around us. And with that thought in mind, join me now in prayer. King of all the earth, creator of the universe and all of its beauty, holy triune God, from everlasting to everlasting, you are Lord. You're merciful and full of loving kindness and great compassion. And it's because of your loving kindness and great compassion that we come to you now, knowing that you are the one who takes away the sins of the world and each one of our sins. For Lord, it's against you and you alone that we've sinned. And it's to you alone now that we seek forgiveness. Wash us thoroughly from all that sets us apart from you and cleanse us from our sin, we humbly pray. You, O oh God, are the one who gives us now clean hearts and right spirits. And so we come with you, come to you with thanksgiving and offer you the sacrifice of praise for sins forgiven, for life now and life to come that comes through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus, in whose name we pray, amen. Our thoughts for today are based on the Gospel of John, the 12th chapter, verses 20 through 33. Now among those who went to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went to Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour of has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice from heaven, I have glorified it and I glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, The voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Let us pray. God, your faithful love surrounds us, and we give you thanks for all that comes our way and the many ways in which you sustain and nurture us. We come before you now, some of us tired, looking for a word to sustain us, encourage us, your spirit to comfort us. Some of us come bruised and, and tired and hurting, looking for healing, longing for wholeness. Some of us come despairing, wondering what has happened and where Where's the joy in our lives? Where is it gone now? And some of us come with heavy hearts, praying for a world on edge, tense with fear, hate, and violence. We seek good news in the midst of the world's bad news. And so, Lord, let your grace rain down on us now. May we be surrounded by your love, your peace, your hope, and as we pray for ourselves, we pray for others, O oh Lord, for those who likewise despair with us. Open our eyes and our hearts to see you in unexpected places. And may we see your love permeating through all society and the world. Lord God, you are a God of surprises. Surprise us this day and the days ahead. Fill us with your spirit that we may widen the circle until all the world knows your grace. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You've seen them down on the beach or in the pet store. They're called hermit crabs, those little crustaceans that inhabit uh, the discarded shells of other creatures. 
They find a shell, move in, begin to eat and grow, and then they get to a point where they've basically outgrown the shell that they've found before or previously, and if they don't find another shell soon, they cease to grow, and eventually they die. The decision to move is a critical point. It's, it's, it's a risk factor for sure. If they decide to go to the other shell, it's a risk that they have to take where they move beyond the protection of one shell to the protection of another, and they're vulnerable in between. The opposite is to play it safe, but just because you play it safe doesn't mean that there aren't consequences. Tom Lind, a salesperson from Montana, is making his rounds, traveling his regular route along southern Oregon coast when one day, he, while he's in his pickup, piggybacked with his camper, he makes a decision to veer from his usual path to take the scenic route. Well, only a few miles on this highway, when the elevation begins to rise rather rapidly and drizzle transforms into swirling snowflakes and much more colder temperatures. Tom is in his big truck, so he keeps going, but the snow keeps coming. Soon Tom finds himself in the middle of a blizzard whiteout. And forced to pull over, Tom stops for the rest of the day. By nighttime, uh, his pickup is nowhere to be seen. It's covered with snow. But, but Tom's not worried. He's, he's in his big pickup. And soon the road clearing crew will come along and help him to escape the cold clutches that hold him and his truck captive. As soon as he fails to arrive the next day for sales appointments, family and friends, state and local police begin to look for him. But no one thinks to go up that little ventured road that Tom chose that day before. Now when the weather clears and blue skies and sunshine come out on Tom's vehicle, the salesman opts to continue to stay smart and to stay with his big truck. It's hard to believe that Tom stays with that big truck for over eight weeks. He keeps a journal of his thoughts, his hopes, his fears, and his options. At the end of January, a group of backcountry skiers inadvertently come across Tom and his safe haven big pickup truck. However, what they find is Tom, Tom's emaciated, dehydrated body still in his truck. It's really fair to say that life is a risk but faith is also a risk. But let's start at the beginning. We worship a risk-taking God. When God created the universe, when God created people like you and me, he took a risk by creating a world that's endowed with freedom. God didn't make us robots. He made us individuals that can make free choices, make decisions on our own. We can choose whether we seek to serve God, whether we seek to love God, whether we seek to follow God whether we seek to follow ourselves. God gives us free will, which means God risks our own rejection, our refusal to be connected to him, to love him, to serve him as individuals and as the world. And the Lord is also taking a risk by entrusting folks like you and me to share the gospel in word and deed, to continue the ministry of Jesus' love for the world. There are three verses that I want to lift up today that challenge us to risk who we are and what we're about as disciples and followers of Jesus. In John 12, verse 24, Jesus says, I am telling you the truth. A grain of wheat remains no more than a single grain unless it is dropped into the ground and dies. If it does die, then it produces many grains. Of course, Jesus is talking about his own life, what he sees as a seed, a seed dropped into the ground, which is uh, reminiscent of his death, his dying and being placed in a tomb. But with his death and resurrection, of course, comes the production of many grains, the, the fruit of, of our lives and all the lives so that Christ has touched and saved through the generations since his, his resurrection for the last 21 centuries. But this idea, this principle of life through the death of a seed from the plant world is, is one that you and I have witnessed. It's, it's something you and I witnessed as, as children when we first planted our, our first seed. 
And it's a reoccurring theme throughout Jesus' teachings and even the scriptures. Uh, spreading the gospel means spreading seed on all kinds of soil, uh, rock, hard soil, the path, but falling on good soil, producing 30, 60, and 100 fold. Jesus' teachings on risk taking when it comes to the parable of the talents, where Jesus uh, tells the story of one who, who gives five talents, two talents, and one talent to be risked, to take a risk in order to accomplish even more. We're mindful of the early disciples of Jesus who left the security of home and temple and tradition and risked it all for Jesus. And even Paul speaks of our death and the promise of new life, uh, just like Jesus, a seed being planted. The idea carried out through this passage of Scripture is simply this, the idea of risk and letting go. And let's be honest, uh, letting go, letting go of, of our way or our understanding or our thinking about life can be awfully difficult in the face of what Christ may ask of us. Jesus then says, those who love their own life will lose it, and those who hate their own life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Uh, it's really kind of a love-hate relationship with ourselves. Uh, on the loving side, it means loving life uh, to the detriment of, of loving ourselves and the things about us in this world more than we love God. To love, God, to love one's life in the here and now is is to concentrate on our own success and to be ruled by our own selfish motives and self-centeredness. On the hating side, when one hates his life in this world, it means to think little of our lives and so much more of God's life and God's desires that one's willing to, to sacrifice everything, to sacrifice it all for God, to love God so much that all the other loves in our lives pale in comparison and actually look more like hatred, even though it is a level of love. We must be so committed to Christ that we should care nothing for our lives. But that doesn't mean we long to die or that we're careless or destructive with the lives that God has given us, but it simply means that we're, we're willing to uh, die if doing so will glorify Christ. It's really God before anything and anyone else. Every day, the question that we ask, is this about me or is this about God? By laying aside our strivings for advantage and security and pleasure, we can serve God lovingly and freeingly, releasing control of our lives and transferring control to, to Christ brings life eternal and genuine joy. Jesus also says, whoever wants to serve me must follow me so that my servant will be with me where I am. To be with Jesus means to be where Jesus wants us to be and not where we want to be. Too often Jesus is in places where, where you and I would rather avoid with people that we're afraid of and doing things that uh, really doesn't grab our desire or our attention. I can't help but think of Mother Teresa in Calcutta who, who uh, wholeheartedly gave her life, her life to the poorest of the poor, the most neglected of people in that society. I think you could agree with me that three, these three verses together carry the themes of, of risk-taking, letting go, sacrificing, and following the lead of Jesus. And it can happen in so many kinds of ways in so many different, at so many different levels of life. Texas Roadhouse CEO and founder Kent Taylor died this past week. And in a statement made by the board's lead director, Greg Moore, he says, we're deeply saddened by the loss of Kent Taylor. He founded Texas Roadhouse and dedicated himself to building it into a legendary experience. During the pandemic, he gave up his salary to help frontline employees. This selfless act was no surprise to anyone who knew Kent 
and his strong belief in servant leadership. The story is told about a young boy who wanted to win the Special Olympics. This story comes from uh, uh, Gide Vanier, who uh, founded the Lahar community for disabled folks. Uh, this young boy wanted desperately to win the Special Olympics and, and prepared whatever he could do to be the best to, in order to win that gold medal. The time came for the race and he ran all out, running as hard and fast as he could. And in the next lane was another youngster striving for the same thing, to win the gold, who suddenly tripped and fell. The first boy, seeing his neighbor, seeing the, his co-runner fall, stops running, turns around, lifts down his hand to him, and helps him up. And then the two runners come in last, hand in hand, a medal lost, but love, self-sacrificing love won. Hermit crabs risk, God risks. How about you and me? Let us pray. God of thundering glory and wondrous love, you lifted up Jesus Christ from the earth to draw all people to your holy name. Like grains of wheat that fall to the dust, Jesus' life died, but he also rose again. And so, Lord, we ask, us, ask you to teach us to die so that we too can bear much fruit, giving our lives for the sake of the gospel and following and serving Jesus all the days of our life. And so, Lord, help us to take risks, to take risks as individuals and to take risks in our congregations and as congregations that indeed the world might know your sacrificial, self-giving love. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace, amen. Have a blessed and wonderful week. Enjoy the, the beauty of the world around us.